She's just 20 years old and she's a rape survivor. Now she's found refuge in the safe house in Tigray's capital, Mekele. Here, more than 20 women are trying to deal with their trauma. They were raped by soldiers. So was she, assaulted in her home village before she fled. They came to every house and forced the men to leave. I was left inside in my home. Then they raped me. Three soldiers raped me. After they left me, I fainted because I was bleeding so much. Women come here from the city's referral hospital. Most of them are suffering severely from the violence. There are women who have rectal prolapse, women who, who have bleeding, women who have pain in their stomach, girls who are not stable psychologically. The psychological trauma doesn't actually only happen on the victim. It happens to you as well when you hear their stories. The conflict in Tigray began early November. The Tigray People's Liberation Front is battling the Ethiopian National Army. Amhara and Eritrean forces are also believed to be involved, fighting alongside the government troops. In Mekele, survivors accuse both Ethiopian and Eritrean soldiers of raping them. In a single month, the city's referral hospital has received more than 150 rape cases. Several women have come to get an abortion. This woman is over three months pregnant. She was raped while trying to walk to her family home outside of Mekele when the fighting started. At first, they tried to scare me. We don't care about you, they said. We only listen to our urges. I didn't say anything. After they'd done what they wanted, they left. I put my clothes back on and took all my bags and went. The hospital is struggling to cope. Doctors have been pressured not to make the cases public, but one gynecologist did speak out. It is, it was very, it is very, really devastating. Many uh, girls are getting pregnant, as well as present with sexual transmitted diseases, with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, really devastating. Tigray's interim government has promised to investigate the cases. It says it is boosting the regional police force to try to bring the perpetrators to justice. But many women are still trapped in their villages, so there is great concern that the majority of rape cases remain unreported and that they are alone with their trauma. Correspondent Maria Gert Nicolescu sent us that report from Mekele, and she joins me now from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Maria, Powerful, painful testimony from the survivor you met. How much help is there for the women who've been subjected to this horrific sexual abuse? Yeah, well, throughout the region, the help uh, is very uh, limited. But in the hospital that I visited in uh, Mekele, so that's uh, the referral hospital, there is a small center called the One Stop Center where women can go, uh, make a deposition, and receive some uh, medical treatment that they need. But the main problem is that there's a massive shortage of medical equipment and medicine. So it's very difficult for the nurses working there to actually provide the needed help to these uh, women. And then within the hospital, uh, women who've been raped and got pregnant. Uh, are able to get an abortion and receive some type of limited uh, psychological support. And the hospital also refers some of the women to that safe house uh, that I show in the beginning of the report, where they receive additional psychological support. But all in all, the help is very limited, especially in rural areas with uh, many health centers that are not operating and that have been looted and very limited NGO access in those areas. Mm. Uh, another p aspect of uh, the final point you made in the report, uh, did you get the sense that these rape incidents were far more numerous than what you saw? And do we know how many women have actually suffered this abuse? Well, we don't have the total uh, number of uh, women who've been raped. And the main reason for that is it's believed that the majority of them uh, are still trapped in their towns or uh, villages. Uh, that's because of lack of transportation, because of the insecurity, and also uh, simply because of lack of money. And a few uh, numbers that I have been able to gather, so that's 150 women in the referral hospital in Mekele, 174 women in the hospital in Adigrat, that's about three hours north of Mekele, give an indication uh, and 
give an indication also of the violence of these rapes, uh, but it's widely believed uh, that many, many more women uh, are trapped in the rural areas. And many of these women reporting the rape uh, are accusing soldiers, uh, Ethiopian soldiers as well as Eritrean soldiers. Uh, it looks as if rape is being used as a weapon of war. Is anyone investigating this? Yes, yeah, so international organizations such as the United Nations have repeatedly called for uh, independent investigation teams to be allowed into the Tigray region, but so far uh, no access has been granted as far as I know. I met with the interim president of Tigray. He, his name is Mulu Nega. He was appointed by Abiy Ahmed, and he promised that his, his administration is going to investigate the rapes. Uh, he said that the rapes are not uh, perpetrated by only one group uh, of people, but he also uh, stressed that the security apparatus in the re region has been significantly weakened and that he's therefore trying to kind of strengthen the local police force. But as far as independent investigation uh, goes, there's been no progress so far. Mm, and I guess one of the issues that the investigation would probably be looking at is when these incidents happen. Do we have an idea of, uh, was it early on in the conflict or is this something that's still going on? Well, I only talked to individual witnesses, so it's very difficult to paint kind of a, a global picture. But from what I've seen, uh, women have been raped uh, as early as November. That's when the conflict started in Tigray. And I also met a woman who'd been raped at the end of February. And with the continuing uh, fighting in many areas of Tigray, there's still uh, much that we don't know. And so the problem is far from over. And uh, just a quick one regarding your visit. This uh, was a rare visit to Tigray. Is the region now more accessible to the media? Well, allowing uh, journalists in the region was definitely uh, a big step forward. But first of all, it was only a limited uh, list of journalists who weren't allowed into the region. And there was no restriction per se. No one was telling me you're allowed to go there or there while I was working. But the problem that we faced is that several uh, uh, translators, local translators who were working with international journalists were arrested and intimidated. And so that kind of sent a, a message to other people that were working with journalists and to journalists as a whole. So this was uh, the main problem uh, that we faced uh, and that, you know, people that were working with us uh, faced while we were in Tigray. Okay, correspondent Maria Gert Nicolescu in Addis Ababa. Thank you for bringing us up to speed. Thank you.